Hello everybody. I'm going to start here a bit early and if you can uh, see me and hear me uh, just give me a shout. I'm gonna move my phone out of the way there out of that. I have said to people if you need to get a hold of me you can email me or those of you that might have my phone uh, you can text me. Just want to make sure everything's working here. Uh, I'm trying to remember now how I got the uh, the lovely comments the last time. Let's see if I can find those. here. Nope, that's not them. Okay, can everybody hear me well enough? Um, Kate or Lois, can you uh, send me a text? Oh, good. I've got a, I can see you and hear you. That's good. Now, if I could just see the comments, that would be great. Not terrible. You know, I did this last m a couple months ago, and now I can't remember how I actually got on to the comments. And I might just have to give that up as a bad thing. Right now. Okay, we are going to get started uh, just so that we can get going and I'll play and see if I can find the comments again later. I do much prefer it when I can talk to everybody and not have to just chat away. However, welcome to Evening Artistry and tonight what we are doing is Santa's Workshop, the North Pole. I guess I should turn it this way so people can see it. Um, you should see the setup I have here. Again, I have my puzzle boxes over here. I have my camera. I'm hoping everything looks good. I can see you guys a little better uh, now. And uh, we'll go from, go from there. So the first thing that we are going to be doing to start out with is we are going to be doing the background. And the background is fairly easy to do, believe it or not. I know some of you, I've gotten a few things that say, oh my gosh, we're a little bit scared uh, of how this is going to work. Um, but it is fairly simple. Now, the first thing that I want you to do is where this light post right now is positioned, this particular light, is five and a half inches down this way and three and a half inches over this way. And for those of you that operate in the proper terminology, um, that would be, good God, I don't know. I hope you have inches somewhere there. And now I've lost my pencil. Okay, so we're gonna go down five and a half inches right there. And we're over, see, I always guess wrong over a bit there so it's about that area and this is where I'm going to want to start my white circle and we are going to 
use white paint. Now, what I said on the instructions is be very, very, very careful when you're painting the white paint or using your white paint. Don't use it in the container because we are going to be using it throughout and you are going to need actual white, white paint. So don't use it all up unless you have some more somewhere around there and that you can uh, use it. So what we are going to do is we are going to start with uh, the white and you can see I've been playing already so um, as well make sure you don't have a really wet brush and make sure you don't have a really really dry brush. I'll try and get this a little bit wider. Because I was doing something else. I was uh, there. So we're going to load our white paint up and all we want right now is just the white. And we are going to start right in the middle. I'm going to turn it around a little bit here. And we are just going to have some fun. We're going to go around and around. Then we're going to switch to the other side of the brush and go around. Okay. And you should have, it's really hard to see, obviously it's just a white circle right at the moment. And we're going to make that fairly wide all the way around. And then what we are going to do is we are going to have a little bit of black and some blue as well. All right, you're going to take the black and you can mix it up a little bit with your popsicle stick. If you have one of these, because you might have a palette knife from last time, you can use it as well. You're going to take a teensy bit of black and you are going to mix it in with your blue. The reason I say a teensy bit of black is because if you put too much black into any color, what happens is you get an awful lot of black and not a lot of the color. So we just want to make this a darker blue. So you'll notice that I haven't washed my brush off, so still got quite a bit of the white on there. But I'm going to come in. with a little bit of the white too because we'll start off with it being fairly light. All right, and then we're going to continue our circle the same way, going out and around. Now you notice that my brush is fairly dry so I'm going to go back in to my water, get it a little bit wetter, and then keep going. We can come back if you've got the drag marks like I have here, just flip around. But this entire background is done as a circle, okay? So we're going to continue on. As we go through, what we're going to do is we want that to be a little bit black, more black in it. Oops, that was a bit of wet. One of the things you have to do is you have to make sure that you're just popping your uh, brush down on your paper towel to uh, make sure it's not totally wet. Okay. We're just going to continue along in this vein, going around and around and around. You might want to wash your brush off and try again a little bit there. And you notice I'm adding, got a little bit blacker.
And don't worry about the white there. We're going to go back in with the white a little bit just to blend it in a little bit. We want to get the whole background covered. And then what we are going to start doing down at the bottom here is taking the blue down. That's something that if you got the instructions there. So we're going to start taking the blue down into here. And it can be fairly light blue, so you may want to add a little bit of your white to it because this is where you're going to get the snow. So it's pretty much just a really quick background. And now I'm making a mess of the tablecloth, too. Okay. There we go. All right. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Now give your brush quite a good wash there. So we're going to go in back in and just uh, take a look again here at the white and just blend that white in a little bit. I go through a lot of paper towels on this because I'm constantly using them to get the paint off and uh, to uh, make sure it's not too um, not too damp. Okay. I think I have a bit too much white paint on there. So now you can go back just around the edge. And just blend that in a little bit. And then just while this down here is still a little bit wet, we're going to take a little bit of white again, just some white again, and just go back down here and just go back and forth with the white to simulate the snow. And don't worry if it blends in too much. We're going to be using quite a bit of white on that area after. So we'll go back in with the white in a bit. And the next thing that we're going to do is make sure this is all dried before we add the pattern. So I'm going to flip here because I did one earlier. Although I'm going to add a bit of white to this one. And We're going to get ready to put on the pattern. Now one of the things that I want to talk to you about with this pattern, which is somewhere totally lost, okay, 
you can see the pattern. The pattern is with the lamp post, and then we have the legs. These do not go on at the same time, so the only thing that we are going to be putting on is the lamp post, okay? So just give that a minute to, I'm going to give this a minute to dry just so that I can see if I can come up with the comments. I'm going to check here for any emails and I'm going to check. Do not know why I can't quite come up with the comments. I did very well the last time and had no problem finding the comments. Do you think I can find the comments this time? Nope. Not a clue where they are. They're not coming up. So. I will look for my instructions. I had someone sitting right here the last time, of course. And she made sure that I knew where everything was. And unfortunately, it's just me. By the way, yeah, I'm, I'm just giving everybody time to get that done while I look for the comments. I just wanted to make sure that we got to this point so that you can kind of play with this uh, until I figure out where the comments are. <laughs> Okay, so one of the things they didn't put in on all my instructions is where to find the comments. Okay, so while you're still still going there, I am going to see if somebody else can help me. Yeah, this must be different. I wonder if it's, uh, let's try a full screen interface and let's see what happens. And yeah, Katie, I don't have uh, something that has that. Okay. I had them the last time, Alyssa. <laughs> 
it's funny it you know it's uh like where did they go everybody's trying to do their best here to to help me out and i have no clue they were so easy to find the last time and i remembered how to do them and uh, I could see them all and this time I know that there, there's a way of doing it but I actually cannot see anything okay this is when you actually it's when you actually text somebody else so while we're doing this here, the next thing for you to do, if you're to this point, is to get this on here. So that means you figure out that your, where your lamppost should go along with that and lift up the pattern. Put the graphite paper in so the dark part is down. Just like this. And then we're going to trace this out. Make sure to press hard enough so that you can see the pattern. One of the things I should have done is not do this straight on because I am naturally somebody who does this all at an angle Now you will notice in my original, if you take a look, one of the bars is wonky, but I did change that for you guys so that you should be able to be a little less wonky. got a mess. We'll get rid of that later. That, that of course is uh, from it being too wet. All right. Hopefully, Linnea will get a hold of me and tell me how to find the comments. I'm just going to check the emails then, see if anybody is has any questions, seeing as I can't see the comments. So, Linnea is going to give me a call and tell me how to do this. So we're going to keep recording here. <laughs> and I will get you to finish this and go on. Hello. Hey. Okay. Okay, so, okay. And you're going to need to make sure everything is muted because I don't want to hear 
that are listed in that post. Um, and then I would pull your um, the YouTube card to the side where the comments are, and they'll, they'll keep popping up. Okay. Okay, crap. That may be one of those things that just may be, how do I bring it down? Because right now I'm in full view, so I have to bring it down. To, so I don't want full screen. Yes. For OBS, you don't want full screen. So in the top hand corner. Okay. Yep, got it. Yeah, so I've got that. So now if I come up here and I go in YouTube. Yeah. And YouTube will still be beautiful. If you put the YouTube full screen and you just stick OBS on top of it, you'll see the comments while I was looking. Okay. Hang on. So now how do I find me on YouTube? So just search up Evening Artist Group at your public library. Okay. I should have got these instructions before. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, for me, no. Come on. Now it's giving me doing sticky key things, it says. Okay, there we go. All right, it's telling me that they are. Okay, there's me. I got it. Okay, yeah, all right. No, Thank you. No. Now I need to mute this. And so I need to mute um, just YouTube, right? Okay, got it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, all right. Bye bye. All right, I think we, we are now better able. Okay, your paintbrush is shedding. Uh, you know what, this is, this is one of the problems that with some of the cheaper brushes that we've had to buy is that the, the paintbrush might be um, shedding just a, a little bit. Um, okay. So I, I've seen, I can see the instructions. <laughs> now what I'm going to try and do is pull uh, the other one up here and um, and make sure that I have the two of them together so that I can see the comments and that I had this like I said done last time and it was good but this time it's just not working out quite as well so I do apologize for that guys how are we doing now the blending of the let's go back and just go over the blending of the moon a little bit um, and it's not really the moon, it's the reflection of the light. So all I ended up doing was uh, taking a bit more white in there and just going around just like this. And it doesn't have to be totally blended because the light will diffuse in whatever way. So it'll work however you want it to work there. So hopefully that helps. Okay.
All right. How are we doing? Has everybody got their uh, pattern on? Just send me, you can now see the comments, so. Are we ready to start? So what we'll do is, depending on the kind of brushes that you might have, you can use one, the flat one that you've got. I'll show you what you guys, some of you guys may have got here. So some of you may have got this one. All right. So you can try using that one. That's a nice small one. If you have something like that, you can use that. Anything kind of small. You can even use a round one if you've got that, okay? This is where your tape comes in. So, you're going to tape these two on the outer sides. And make sure they're sticking down quite a bit. So that they don't bleed, okay? When you're doing this, this will help you get a straight line. Just have to make sure it's not bleeding there. Now you're going to use the black, straight black, and just paint. Remember that you should not have a dry, dry brush, but you should not have, like I have right here, really wet paint. Okay, now while I'm waiting for that, I am very carefully going to draw down here. And then draw down here on the other side. making sure to follow the line. And then we're going to fill that in. So while we do that, you can just paint away. It looks like some of you have gone back to fix your, your uh, reflections. Uh, is the tape necessary? The tape is not necessary uh, if you paint straight. And you may not care whether the light pole is straight. I just can't paint straight. So the paint is for those that want to put it on there. If you feel that you can do it, without the tape, yeah, go ahead and do it because it will be a lot faster. But I've got things that go a little bit wonky. My hand jigs and jags a little bit. Okay. 
thing, yeah. The problem with partly with this dollar store tape, which is what I have, is that you have to go back in and you have to fix it as well. So, what I will do just for those of you who might not have tape, I'll just show you how to do it with the brush you have there. You'll have to ignore what happened over here on this side and fix it. But we don't have enough time for that this evening. So for example, if you wanted to, I'm going to take the brush that you would have had there. Okay. You're going to do And you can just go along the side there very carefully. Notice so I have a bit of a shake in the hand. So that's why I was trying to use the tape. A uh, brush, Caitlin, probably a, uh, and you might be using an angle brush, or you can be using a small flat. I'm not sure which one you might have, and some people may have a small uh, round one, and you can use that too. It's so really, really, this, this particular one you don't really have to. It's whatever works for you. Some people might even be using a larger brush. So if you were using the tape and you wanted to use it, you could then tape along here and along there just to get that. So is everybody ready for whatever is going to be your Christmas celebration this year? I still haven't even got my, my tree is not completely up. All my decorations though are out on the garage floor. which is about as far as I often get because I'm working on some other projects. I learned how to uh, use a Cricut Maker and I've been doing some projects on that. I don't have one, but we have one here at the, the library that hopefully will be available. To the public. 
Let's see what happens when we open downtown. I'm also working on a, uh, a nutcracker, a wooden nutcracker. This wooden nutcracker has quite the story to it. I picked up this nutcracker in Winnipeg and I was there for a Canadian Library Conference and this is so long ago that the the person that I went with um, she has she passed has passed away she had retired and passed away but she was also uh, still married to her first husband at the time and this uh, this trip was quite the adventure I have to tell you we even had our flight cancelled on the way back So I'm just going to let that dry a little bit and let you guys catch up just a little bit. Okay. I seem to be frozen there. On one screen. How far down does the light lamp post go? Well, it goes down to probably, mine's a little bit longer here now, but if this is, I'll show you where, if I can show you there, about that far. And we're going to cover it with some snow to ground it. So it doesn't have to be a nice straight edge across there, okay? <laughs> okay, for those of you that are just joining, and it seems to be that there are a few people here and there, the first thing we are starting out with, uh, just as a review, is we are going to be doing the reflection of the lamppost first, and uh, you start with white paint and it has to be, you know, the complete white and you just take your brush and you go round and round in a circle and then after you've got your nice white circle you're going to add blue with a little bit of black on it and go around and around and around right there. And once you've got all that blue covered 
through there, you are going to bring some blue down here and then add some white. Okay, now you will notice that one of the things that I did not put on that uh, lamp post was the part that sticks out. And for this, I am going to use my tape and hope for the best. So what we have to remember is that we are going to have this sign that's going to be hanging off of the lamp post. very carefully seeing as this tape bleeds we want to make sure we take it out far enough that looks about right I'm just going to let it dry just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, uh, unfortunately this, uh, if you have dollar store tape, I'm going to say it's a really bad idea. So I'll just clean that up with a bit of water before it dries. And it, yes, if it seems like I'm moving fast, I'm moving a little bit fast just because I want to get all the parts in. And we can kind of go back and we can talk about what needs to be done along the way. And I'll keep reviewing. It's hard when you can't see everybody's and where you're at. So if you can let me know and I'll slow down a little bit and just pop on in. When you finish painting the lamp post in all black, pop into the comments and let me know. And if you can't do the comments, because you're as bad as I was at finding them, um, we'll get on to the next part when more of you are ready. Now we want to make sure that all of this is is uh, dry. So if you um, need to dry your lamp post, You can use your hair dryer to dry it.
Okay, got one lamp post done. Silly graphite paper. Made quite the mess. Okay, All right, I think my poor old managed to fix my stuff there where I can see things. How's your water looking? Do you need a change of water, anybody? Mine's kind of this lovely blue, so I'm going to switch it out here. I made sure that I have several different buckets of water there. Let's see if I can air. So if your lamp post is done and your lamp post is dry, especially down at the bottom, the next thing we are going to do is this portion of the white and coming over into here. Okay. Just while everything dries on that lamp post. So get yourself some nice white. And then what you are going to do is you're going to start behind the lamp post there and you are going to bring it out to use your biggest brush for this and just come out like this and do a semicircular part. Then I'm going to come up over here just to ground the lamppost just a little bit there. I'm just going to pull it out just a, oh, did it again, too much water. Gonna come up more of a semicircular there. And you can keep working on that as it dries. So once it's dry, you want maybe you want to go back in and add some more white to it. And then we're just gonna take a little bit of white along the top of your brush. And we're going to go behind again the lamp post and on either side and just kind of make some snow banks. One of these snow banks your elf is going to be in, so just remember that as you're doing that.
And throughout the painting, we're going to go back in a little bit. So don't worry about it too much. And add some more white once everything dries. That's why I'm saying that you're going to need some of that white. And don't forget to do the other side of the snowbank and the lamppost. Anybody else have their lamp post done? So I'm going to leave that to dry there. You can just see how all the swirls and everything sort of make us a, uh, a um, bit of a snow scene there. Okay, I'll check in with everybody. I don't so so far so good, 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 good. I, I sure miss seeing all of you guys. Got some people kind of sending me pictures. That's good. Looking good so far. All right. Anybody who can't come in? Oh. Okay. All right. Jacqueline, did you get your moon blended okay? I'm just seeing your email here. Does anybody need me to go back and go over anything? Um, the snow is not a real wet brush, Kate, uh, but it is a bit wet and let me try this a bit again. So I'm taking my, my brush and I'm just dragging it down through into the white. Okay, and here I'll do it on this other one that I've got over here. And then it's just kind of swoosh and swooshing. And yeah, if it drags a bit too much, but not so much water that it's there. Um, one of the things I always say is you're not really operating ever with a really dry brush unless I tell you to, okay? Um, your brush should always have a bit of water in it, but not so much that it's dripping wet. So I'm kind of just making snow banks all over the place. Okay, lamppost done in black. Good, lamppost, good. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do, and this and this is really where I suggest the tape, is that we are going to make a square, or not a square, a small rectangle. And this is for this sign right in here. 
Kubo, by the end of it, I'm going to be a mess. And I'm going to just kind of measure down a little bit here, just to make sure that I've got this straight. And I'm going to put this one down. Let's see if I can get it here. And then I'm going to put this tape here. And then I'm going to go, that doesn't look very straight. Okay. Now the rest of it, you want to make sure that your sign is going to fit in there. And like I said, it should be three inches across. So I'm going to mark it there on that. And then I'm marking it two inches down here. And again, I know I'm using the old measurements. I really, really have a hard time with centimeters and everything. I can do all sorts of things just fine. I can go Celsius back to Fahrenheit, no problem. I can do kilometers. I can even still think in miles, but I cannot figure out I'm afraid, centimeters and inches. One of the things on the maker is that, because of course it's Canadian, you know, when you're doing your Canadian measurements, um, I'm just trying to get the tape down there, is to have this, all of their stuff comes out in the centimeters. Well, all of the designers, if you're doing something, they have in inches. And so I was finally, you know, trying very hard to get in and use Google to switch everything around. And what did I discover is that there's a little button that I could just toggle over and I could do everything in inches. Okay, so now that we've got that there, which is hopefully straight, We are going to paint that in white. So this may take several coats. So make sure that in this case your paintbrush is not too wet with the paint or not and not too wet with the water. Otherwise, you're going to have to probably have to use the hair dryer on it anyway just to make sure. So we'll do one And then we're going to do something else once we've got that first one on here. Right, let, let everybody get that done. Let me know as you've got your sign measured out there. check everybody. Everybody looks so good so far. I'm going to run over my uh, hair dryer, of course, is way over here.
Okay, once you've got that dry, you can put on a second coat. All right. While we're waiting for that to dry, because we're going to need a third coat anyway, I'm going to try, normally what I would do with the trees is I would use something like this. Uh, an angle brush and I for those of you that got the packages I could not get uh, an angle brush and as a matter of fact it's become so difficult to get the brushes that I think that in the next one we'll probably just let you know what brushes you might need and uh, some of you may already have some um, anyway uh, but it'll be just easier for you to get the brushes yourselves um, so we're going to try with the one that did come with for you and we'll see if I can make a tree with it. Okay, the trees right now to start are in black and we've got two trees on this side and one over here. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a straight-ish line down for the tree. And the tree will come to have a bigger trunk down near the bottom. Now I don't know how well you can see that. You can just see it there. all the way down. All right, let's see if I can do the tree using this brush. So again, it's all in the black. Make sure that you're fairly dry and then we're going to go so that it's up and down. See if we can just see it there and come down and just pounce up and down. Now you can put it on a bit of an angle. The angle probably works just a little better. Okay, you can see how I'm just coming out like this. And just remember, we're at the North Pole. Trees are probably not too, you know, thick. Okay. So I'm just kind of pouncing it at an angle there and I'm coming up a little bit and you can just see kind of what it looks like and just make sure to put some branches on in the front just pounce them up and down there ok 
Okay, we've done the first one. Check. Now we want to just go back and check our sign. Can we put a third layer on? If you can, if you're ready for that, go back and do a third layer. We just want this nice white sign. I'm not pushing my brush down very hard on this either so that I've got that. Ah, okay. Jacqueline's asking why it sounds real rough. I am, am really... See if I can do it on the next tree there, Jacqueline. So it sounds rough because I'm really kind of pouncing down. So the next tree I'm going to move just a little bit farther up and I'm going to do the trunk. It, so I'm going up and down, so kind of pouncing it. And I'm really pushing down. Just have to be careful how far you push down. So it's just kind of an up and down motion. See if I if I have my uh, angle brush, and then I would just be pouncing it. So it's almost like you're really kind of grinding the paint down into the into the canvas there. Okay, I should have used that other one because that one's not working. So you can angle it a little bit. And I'm really pushing the paintbrush down. Okay, that's fine. Fix that tree. Check on your sign again. And do you need a fourth layer? If you do, let's do the fourth layer. Uh, the, it is actually, it's really, I guess, kind of hard to see. Um, the tree does have branches, but they will really show up much more when you add the white to them. So there are individual branches that you can see coming out if I can show you with that.
And again, while we wait for that to dry, I'm going to put one more tree in the back here. Maybe this will be show up a little bit better because it'll with be with some of the white. So angle. Just see sort of where I'm pouncing this up and down. But it doesn't really look like much of a tree until we actually put the white on it. Okay, I'm just going to go over and dry this. Okay, so at this point I'm going to remove my tape. And if I still feel that I need to add any more white, I can do that. Okay, where's everybody at? Give me a, a status update. Let's see where we're at. Hard to tell whether to go on or what to do until I know where everybody's at. So while I'm waiting for comments, I'll just fix up my little mess up here. So one of the good things about this is that if you do have a bit of a mess, you can come in and just fix it up. Okay, so. 
See, as you can see, you can still come back in and put a little bit more white if you need to around your lamppost there. And if you uh, need to add to your sign at all, you can still do that. Now the good thing is, of course, you can come back and you can check in on the recording so that if you don't want to rush through this, you don't have to. Okay. I'm not getting any status reports, so we're going to go on. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to add the white so that we have a bit of uh, highlights on our lamppost. Now the first one, again, we're going to be using straight white. You're going to load your brush. Let's see if I can show you there with a triangle on the side. And you're going to just put it down on your paper towel. If I added that, I should, it didn't add that, I shouldn't, should have. So that you don't have very much white left, okay? And then you are going to go across these various things. So we'll start up at the top here. That may be a bit too much white. Might have to go back in. And just do a little bit of white to highlight that. The next piece is this that goes straight across here. So right there straight across there. I'm just going to wet it a little bit because it's a bit dry. Go up a little bit there. There. Okay. And then each of these on the left hand side just has a little bit of a white line going down. And then right across here, like that, again a little bit too much white in there. So I'm just going to come back in with a bit of water and take some of it off. And then just a little bit here to about across there. Okay, and you can see how that starts to pop your, your lamp post a little bit. And the final one is going to be straight down here.
Okay. How's everybody getting along there? Anybody? Anybody out there? Anybody? Okay, we're going to go back with the trees. I'm going to start the back one here, which I should have done. And I'm going to do this brush. If you have the angle brush, you do the angle brush. But I'm going to just load a little bit of white up and with this one, not too much. You don't want a lot of white. It's very light. And you just kind of come in and pounce a little bit. It definitely works better with an angle brush. show you sort of how an angle brush will work. Angle brush works nice because you kind of get that. Triangle. But you can just use your flat brush there. And you might just have to use your hand just to Kind of doing the same pouncing motion. And if you end up like me, like I am getting a little bit too much white in there and I'm losing a bit of my black, just go back in with the black again and kind of go back and forth. Good. Got a couple of status reports. Barb, Lynn, how are you doing? Megan, how's it going? Lois? Now we're going to ground the trees pretty soon and that will involve some of the swooshing uh, that I told uh, somebody that we were going to do and they all they kind of looked at me and went 
Oh, you know how well I do with the swooshing. But this is just a, a simple kind of a snow swoosh. But first, before we do that, oh, I'm just going to uh, take somewhere in here. You all should have a fairly narrow pointed small round. Okay, we're going to take that small round with a little bit of black. Remember, making sure that you don't have a lot of water. Have a wet brush, but not a lot of water. So if you have to take some of the water off, and you can, all right. And we're just going to do a couple of little sign hooks. I need more black and less. Just kind of a circle. Right there. Okay, now you've got your sign hooks on. I'm just looking at my uh, trees here, and I'm going to come back in with a little bit of black. They're a bit too white for me. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of contrast. One of the things that you can do, of course, as you go through your painting, is that you can stop, take a picture of it, go back, get a little further away, and take a look at it. Because when you're looking at it very close, you can't really see it properly. But it gives you a whole different perspective if you take a picture of it. One of the things you can do later too is you can keep playing with your trees and some of the other stuff until you really get a lot of the white popping out and some of the other things there. All right, where are we? 703, okay. Let's swoosh some snow. So I'm taking my biggest brush. You take whatever you have. This team tends to be a really big brush. Um, put some white on it. but take some of the white off as well because you want it very, very light. And so what you want to do is you want to swoosh your snow just a little bit and just very light, kind of giving it little swoosh across, little swoosh back here. You're just giving the at the uh, land, making it look like there's land and not sky there. That's what I'm trying to say. And you're trying to ground your trees at the same time.
and just take this opportunity to do a little bit more white. A little less of a swoosh, but a little bit more white. On your snow banks. there. Just brighten it up a little bit. So I'm taking a little bit of the yellow just to do a bulb. And you'll notice that you've got very little yellow. And you can mix it with white to make it a little bit less yellow, very light yellow. So I've got just, let's see if you can see that. You can barely even see the yellow there. That kind of yellow that. And I'm just going to kind of do a, a little bit of a lamp in there. How's everybody doing? Okay. All right, sign time. You should all have a Santa's workshop thing, courtesy of our wonderful Claire Brown. I am going to use the tape again just to tape it on so it doesn't move. I'm not taping it all around, but you're going to need your graphite paper again. One of the things I'm going to say about this, first of all, make sure you get it on straight. And you're just going to tape a little bit at the top and a little bit to the side. Yeah, trees can be a little hard to do. I've got a comment there on the trees. Some of the trees, I think probably when we did them in class before or we've done anything, we've used the uh, Deerfoot brush. And remember we used the fan brush and uh, that uh, makes it a little bit better. Look at that, there's my hands. Going all on top of my, my nail polish as well. Hopefully I don't have to replace that. Okay, one of the things that I'm going to say about your Santa's workshop sign is make sure that you push hard enough or you're going to have lots of fun with it. So very carefully. Trace it. I think I've already screwed it up, but we'll fix it. Now, one of the things I would say is if you just do an outline, you could make the big loops 
and everything later. And make it thick in various places along the way. What do you want to bet I will not have a straight? I'm going to use the ruler just so I have a straight arrow. Now you don't have to do this as exact as we have here either if you don't want to. Okay, so there's my Santa's workshop. Now this is where I gave you a choice. Ah. Hey, listen, I, I'm just watching some of the comments. Sign John Freehand, perfect. If you can do the sign freehand, go ahead. Uh, and yes, that's, I, I, totally agree with a lot of people that they're just saying I'm rewinding a lot and absolutely this is one of the good things about the virtual version is that you can rewind and go back um, and take a look at it and you're of course not in any rush because you're at at home um, I am in more of a rush because they'll kick me out of here <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to do my Santa's workshop sign. If all you want to do is use a Sharpie on this, go ahead. That's why you have a nice little pointy brush though for these. Again, put your black on, or by the way, red, green, whatever color you want to make this sign, you can do that. Um, and as a matter of fact, if you're doing the, uh, the elf, you may want to do it in red and green because that would balance it, it out quite well. And you want to just take your black and you may have to just go back and forth quite a bit into your black paint and follow what you've got here on this as to where it is. I just love somebody's Barb saying there in the comments uh, that uh, her son walks in and about told her it looks good. Of course they look good, but it's so nice to hear somebody say that. Okay, let's just do the sign here. Now I may leave a lot of the sign and go on so I can show you some other things. Just so we make sure we get everything finished. Because you guys can play with your sign when we sign off. Also, for some reason, I don't have my glasses with me. I don't know where they are, what bag they are in. Okay, there we go. Okay. 
uh, but I can't see this as well as I should be able to. Okay. They actually moved. I've got these lovely little, as everybody, some people that have done my classes know, I've got these eyelash brushes and I love them for doing these little tiny things. Make me much happier. I'm going to leave the sign because we're at 716 and I want to be able to do the uh, elf for you. So I want to be able to show you how I did the elf and I could spend you know the rest of the time doing the sign. All right. So again, we're going to need the graphite paper. But first, you are going to determine where that elf is going to go. If you want the elf, by the way, if you find that after doing this portion of it, that you quite like just that, you don't have to do the elf. I'm going to put the elf right about here. And I'm going to turn it a little bit there. I think it's a little bit different than what I have. There, actually, that's where it's going to go. And again, I'm going to do this quite dark. Make sure it shows up because, of course, it didn't on my original painting. I don't know, you'll have to name your elf too, but we'll say this is Elvis the Elf. Whether Elvis the Elf is just clumsy or whether Elvis the Elf has been to the Christmas party and just tripped and fell. So we've got the elf there. I'm just going to show you my elf at this point that's I keep turning it upside down for you and I use red there and I used red you can go back and forth it doesn't matter which one you want to do I may be doing a different color because it turns out hold on I might have to get my green found my green. So I'm going to put my green. Now what you have with your red is I'm going to want you to make sure that you mix it with the pot, one of the popsicle sticks is because you have a bit of red, brilliant red with a bit of crimson in it, which is probably the blob on top that you can see. And I have some crimson red here. 
that unfortunately is completely dried out. So hopefully I have some good crimson. And yes, you mix the two colors together. My reds just fell into a mess. Drop the red. Okay. One of the things that I find about red is that it has to sometimes have a white background underneath. This might be actually just fine. Okay. I've had a few people say they're very far behind, but that's, you know what, that's okay. You just can rewind and you can catch up. So you're just going to paint your red shoes on your elf and I did a green uh, I don't know what you would call those flopsy stuff go and again what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little bit of a there we go um, let this dry because we're going to put a couple of coats on it and we'll go back and do final thing on the lamp post which is the garland now you're not necessarily making this part of the the leggings here straight because we're going to go back over it with white anyway Now, you guys should have in your packages, and those of you that have had um, the packages the last time, you had the brushes that were the bristle brushes and that were more for pouncing, some of it. So, don't think I have one of those here, but those will do your garland much nicer. Now, some of you may also have um, something like this that you can pounce or you may have excuse me just a minute I'm gonna go get another brush
um, you may have a brush that looks like this, which is the deer foot. It's one of my favorite brushes because you can make trees out of it. For those of you that were having trouble with trees, make some great trees with this, but it also makes some great garland. So I'll just show you a couple of ways of doing that. We're going to start the garland here a little bit. We're first of all going to do the garland with uh, green and a bit of black. And again, do we have to be careful of the black? Yes because it will turn your um, green just like really, really, really black. So I'll just try using this kind of brush here. But you should have some bristly ones. So this one you can just kind of pounce. And again, it's just an up and down movement. Okay, you can kind of see where I'm doing that in the small screen and just make sure you go a little bit out because it's coming around and down and we're going to go down i did quite a few of them on the original but i'm not sure that there would be that many I guess it depends on how big a garland you have, right? Okay. Okay, so we have the garland there. That's the first layer. Now let's go back. A lot of this is just going back and forth, adding layers and letting things dry. So let's get another layer of our elf um, leggings on. If it's dry. Mine doesn't seem to be as dry as I would like it to be. I might have to go and use the uh, blow dryer on these. Okay. Yeah, we're going to let it dry a little bit. So I'm going to move back. I'm just going to show you how to use a deer foot on there. The next layer on our garland is going to be the brighter green, just straight green. And we're almost covering most of the the dark but not all of it we want some of the dark to come out and we can always go back in if we need to but we want to stop and take a look at it and make sure we've got enough of it on there Okay. So now we've got the two layers on there. I'm going to dry my red because it's still not dry.
let's go back in and do another layer of the red now that that's dry. This guy's shoe has gotten out of hand. Barb, I had uh, graphite all over the top part here and I just went back in with some white again and covered it up. It doesn't look too bad now. And you might be able to take an eraser to it as well. Okay, I'm going to take the nice pointed brush, the round, and do some of the green. And just do a little bit of the green because I want the pointy part up here, I'm going to start here with the point and come down. Go back into the green again. Okay. I think I forgot one. There we go. I'll have to go back in and do that again too. And then we're going to pounce a little bit of the white over here. Now you can see why I said you need to make sure that you don't dirty your white, because you do use the white a lot. And the white here just come in up along the top. Okay, so the one final thing that I did not do on the garland, but is probably a good idea because on the original I kind of did a, a little fancy berries and everything else like that um, just to balance out the red. But the other thing you can do is come along and just put some berries in your garland and that will balance out the red of the elf and just kind of pounce along and put some berries in there 
And you can do it either way, right? You know, if you don't want to put the berries in, you don't have to. Okay, let me go back with the green again. I might just put a little bit of black in this green because that way it'll give it a little bit of oomph. How's everybody doing? We're getting close to the end here. where at least I will have to say goodbye. And then you guys can go back and forth and continue the painting. If you have any questions, certainly email me. And I'll make sure I check and I can answer. And I know it's hard when we're doing stuff like this and some people are slower, but at least we have the video and I'm not kicking you out at the end of class. You can kind of go at your own pace. And you've got your paints there. If you do want to polka dot, of course, your leggings, you can just do some little polka dots on there with the green. Or you can do white. Just there like that. Permanent marker is just fine for doing that sign-in. It will look just as good. A couple of things just to add with the white just to the bottom of the shoes. Whoopsie, again, watch how much white paint you put on. Ah. top there just to give it a little bit of a thing and just on the side okay and again we're just going to put some of the snow on just ground our elf a little bit, go back and forth, get some of the white just to cover. And you can just add little bits and whoopsie little bits and pieces of white there. And swish. Again, if you have any questions after we're finished here, just email me. pcline at rdpl.org and I can answer. Some of them you can send me pictures of how they turned out. We'll add some of them to the board report. Any 
questions? And if you have any gold paint left over from the last time, you could add little, little bells to the bottom of the elf's shoes as well. This poor elf's got really long shoes. It's no wonder he tripped and fell. there's the one from tonight you can see a couple of the little berries there um, might go back in again I'd probably still continue to work a little bit on my trees going back and forth get some of the greater contrast in there between white and dark you can keep kind of pouncing trees doing that a little bit and then going back in with some of the white as well. Brighten it up a little bit. Have to finish my sign as well. But do we have any other questions before I sign off? How's everything looking? Let's take a look, see if anybody has any questions that they're not there. Okay. All right. We doing well? Quite the mess up here. No questions? Good. How's everybody's looking? You can send me an email. Um, the next uh, painting will be in February. I think it's like the second week. I think it's February 8th or something like that. I'm not sure what we're going to do. It's a possibility of a sunset. I'm uh, not with blue buildings, but not sure yet. I guess we'll we'll wait and see and see if you have any ideas uh, that you'd like to see. You can uh, certainly um, email me with some suggestions. Um, yes, this will be available on the YouTube page. It'll be available on our Facebook page as well. And you can go back over and you can uh, go back and check things again. If you're running a bit slow, um, you can play catch up uh, with this. I know sometimes it takes a little bit of time. You want to, you know, spend quite a bit of time on it, obviously. And uh, sometimes we just have to be a little faster uh, with this than, than you might want need to be. So... So yes, this will be available. Of course, the last one is still available as well, so you can take a look at that. If you didn't catch our last one, which was the glue gun painting, um, and you can do that. All right. If there are no other questions or comments, and just remember, as I said, you can send me an email and uh, if you have any questions that you need answered after we sign off here, 
I will sign off for the evening. And thank goodness, at least tonight, the last time I left here after the last one, it was so icy out. It took, it was a miserable drive home tonight. It'll be very nice. Thank you everybody for joining me. I hope that you have a painting that you really love and um, something that you can put up over the Christmas season. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. And I know it'll be a very strange one maybe this year. Uh, you're not getting together with all your family and everything like that, but I, I hope you have a good Christmas. Okay, we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.